So a lot of what I'm probably going to say, I think Megan will ditto, but I think a lot of it is educating. Um, I think it's a lot about learning what you're good at, learning what you have to offer and refining those skills and being an expert and, you know, going out of your comfort zone sometimes to attend the class or thank goodness we have the internet now, read an article. Also, I think it's important to have a mentor. Find a mentor if you don't have one. It sounds like Joy would be a great one. Um, but find somebody that you respect and, and that you want to share things with that you will really take some things back to heart. I think that's very important um, as a woman in business and just in life in general is having that mentor and somebody that you can bounce things off of when you're having problems. So yeah, Carrie took two of my three. Um, I'm definitely alongside you with, you know, find a mentor, educating yourself, you know, read books, watch videos, TED Talks are very, very powerful. Um, a new item that I would like to add in is, you know, be watchful. Um, and it can be something as small as when you're sitting there in a meeting and somebody grabs your attention, I like to kind of use that moment to you know identify you know why am i drawn to this person because in my eyes they're a leader and i kind of recognize you know what are those things that are you know engaging or or what are the different um habits traits behaviors that i really like about that leader and i try to mimic and mirror um those moving forward i almost kind of make it like an action step um and and you know a bit of a homework assignment okay so when i was sitting in that meeting i recognized you know person did xyz i remember that and then at my next meeting i try to go ahead and implement it and use that that new um new leadership style to to refine you know my leadership skills I have a definitive answer for this because two people come to mind, but a little bit of a backstory about myself. Um, I'm 22, recently graduated, and I'm just entering the adult world, and it is daunting and it is scary. Um, but five months ago, I walked into my interview and I was introduced to Karen Powell. And Karen, I immediately knew I was in safe hands. She has been my leader, my mentor, my advisor, um, but she's also been a mother figure and she's really been that shoulder to cry on not that i cry at work but um it happens um but through karen i was also introduced to the most inspiring senior male ally that a young girl starting her career could ask for um and this was julian miller so i know he's probably watching now and he's going to kill me but julian has taught me so many valuable lessons and but above all, he's really taught me how to believe in myself and my capabilities and from both of them believing in my intelligence to allowing me to express my passions for everything diversity and inclusion, I'm able to be here today. And I know I have learned so much from them over the last five months, but when my career journey has progressed in a few years time, I'll look back and these are the two most inspiring people that uh, will remain with me forever. And I'm very, very grateful for everything they've done. They've really helped me in ways that they're unaware of. Um, so I'll forever be grateful for them. So for me, uh, my role model and my leadership mentor are very different people. So in the interest of time, you know, I would kind of talk about the person who is the most influential role model to me and really demonstrated to me that theme of breaking the bias. And it was actually my grandfather so I realize it's International Women's Month, but let me kind of back into this one for you. So my grandfather was born in 1890. So just sit with that number for a minute. So he was, he was elderly when I was born, by all means. And when I was young and lived near him, obviously an elderly man. And you would presume that, you know, being from that era, that he may have been less than progressive around, you know, women's issues, women's rights, but he was actually quite the opposite. And so he had four daughters, and he taught his daughters that they were absolutely as smart as any man, as capable as any man, and he taught them that they should never hide in the shadows. 
So what he did was he really emulated for me how you break that bias and how you bring others up. And so when he, by doing that, he gave me four ants that, I mean, I have to tell you, I was enthralled by these women. They traveled, they embraced other cultures. And I think only one of them actually finished high school because that was not uncommon in that era. But they learned second languages. And what they did was they just demonstrated for me what lifelong learning really looks like and what it looks to live like that. And so I am just incredibly grateful that I had these super strong women to look up to. But I'm also incredibly grateful and blessed that I had a grandfather who really modeled that way and, and gave me something to emulate when, you know, working with others. So Zelma, I just said thank you to Anissa in the chat and I'll say thank you to you as well for just really um, reaffirming the significance of male allies in terms of setting the tone and providing that support. So cheers to both of you and your role models and mentors along the way. So, you know, I, I want to just say to be available, be open and, you know, get curious. Um, and when I say that, you know, ask questions. Um, I think both personally and professionally, a few of you have mentioned in today's discussion, you know, to, to understand a person's why, get to know their purpose, you know, personally. Professionally, I like to say that is, you know, use it as an exploration exercise. Um, you know, you get to meet someone new, you get to hear about their job, a new position, a new team, a new division, that may be a new opportunity for you. Um, so I, I just really say, you know, to, to get out there, um, be yourself, get curious. And, you know, we are so blessed to have a leadership team, you know, that promotes self-development and growth, you know, lean into that, use that to your advantage. To me, this is obvious, really, but it doesn't happen as much as it should do. Um, we all need to just align with one another and champion each other, support each other. And we all know that there are less women in leadership roles, but that's where it's especially important for those women to advocate for women at different stages in their careers and build relationships where they can and find mentorship opportunities wherever they can. And um, it's actually as simple as words of encouragement and praise. And I know that we've all, she's not expecting this, but we've all had email correspondence from Charmaine. And I know with every single email that Charmaine has, she always includes a line saying, I appreciate you. I appreciate the work that you do. And it's really simple things like that that make a difference. I see that and it makes my day and I'm sure it does to a lot of you as well. But it's simple things like that, which we need to adapt into our everyday lives. and. We will go a long way, we just need to support each other. Lead by example and bring women up because I think when other men see that, that will kind of reciprocate to the other men around. Um, it's just leading by example, giving credit where credit's due, congratulating women for their achievements, I think would be one suggestion. Watch how the room is going and if whether it's male, female or whoever you want to identify as, if somebody's speaking up and they're not being heard, if you can be an ally for that person and speak up for that person and you know, try to say, listen to this person, give that person a chance to stand up and say something. Perfect, Yvette, thank you. And sometimes it's just as simple as asking people how you can support them. That was something very powerful that early leaders and mentors in my life did for me. Um, sometimes I didn't always have the answer right away, but I knew that the door was open for me to come back once I identified what that one thing was that they could do. So one of my favorite quotes by one of my role models as a child even was, or uh, is, people will forget what you said people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And that was my Angelou. So that's something I always take to heart if I want to make people feel good about themselves after we have had it. Yes, I wanted to uh, first say before I go into uh, my favorite, well, not my favorite quote, it's a quote from one of my favorite strong women that was um, 
was one of my favorite strong women. Um, but I wanted to let everybody know that we are all strong and powerful. We just have to know that about ourselves. It takes time to realize that. And I, and I know that the girls on this call, just like me, we probably, I know for myself at least, not the best at public speaking. I'm a very anxious person. I have a lot of things that I, I fall down on and I don't let those hold me back. And I think that's something that all of us need to take into mind. Um, but I'm going to drop a quote from Betty White because she is one of my favorite, one of my favorite people in the world. And um, uh, it's not even my favorite quote from her. Butterflies are like women. We may look pretty and delicate, but baby, we can fly through a hurricane. And that, that says a lot to this tone of this meeting. And that's why I chose that for you guys. Take that with you today. Okay. Um, well, this, my quote's not from a female, but I just, I live by this. Um, a really great mentor has taught me this quote. And I, I say it to myself every single day that your destiny is not left up to the chance. It is a matter of choice. So you, I just encourage everyone to just choose to live the life you want to live and live it intentionally. My piece of advice that I would like to share with today's audience is, um, you know, try to do 1% better each and every day um, than the day before. So, you know, challenge yourself, um, you know, to, to be the best version of you. 1%, so it doesn't need to be extreme. It can be gradual, slow and steady wins the race. Um, and you'll be surprised how far you, you know, you grow um, in a week, in a month, in a year. Um, so yeah, I challenge myself to be 1% better each day. And that's taken from James Clear of the book, Atomic Habits. Mine is uh, a quote from Wayne Dyer. And it um, is when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And it always is just a reminder of me that there's always another perspective other than my own. And that my perspective can shift and grow and change as well. And I'll leave that there. Something that stuck with me, I read a while ago, um, really helps because I think a lot of us and myself suffer a lot from imposter syndrome and self-doubt but I read something that said she succeeded not because she didn't have failures and because she didn't have doubts but because she carried on fighting despite them and I think that's something I'm really trying to work on and it stuck with me. So this was a quote and I honestly I'm not quite sure where I got it from but it's one that I love because it reminds me to take risk and it's the one that's written at the top of my whiteboard and that is stop letting your potential go to waste because you don't feel confident or you don't feel ready enough. People with half your talent are making serious waves. Well, you're waiting to feel ready. And and I think if anybody knows me personally, they know that I, I'm probably more of a risk taker than most, but I think that you, know, you get one shot and stop waiting until you feel ready to do something. Just go ahead and leave. Um, my favorite quote, and so the book ends, Carrie, I'm going to follow your lead. It's Maya Angelou, and it's, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, and how you can still come out of it. Mm -hmm.